Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining. Uh, we appreciate you taking some time out of your busy schedules to discuss with us some 401k items to consider uh, this year and beyond as there's a lot of new changes coming this year. Um, so first off, just wanted to also thank you all for joining um, Dominion Payroll and their Client Appreciation Week. Um, there is a um, a wealth of knowledge to be shared throughout the week with the different webinars that they're hosting. So we hope that you can continue to join and learn a little bit more about how they can support you and your company's growth um, during a very important time um, towards the end of the year. So we'll go on and get started. Just want to introduce um, ourselves. Uh, so I am Carrie Dudley. I'm the Director of Operations of DP Grow. And with me, I have our Vice President, Dennis Tender. And the two of us work together in concert to really support our DP Grow clients um, with all of their retirement plan needs. So we are a full service um, RIA firm. We provide um, investment advice. Um, we assist with your uh, plan design, work with your payroll company uh, very closely to make sure that your payroll is integrated and, and that your retirement plan is operating in a way that allows you to be a little bit more hands off. With that, um, Dennis provides um, meetings with all of our clients as well as their employees to provide some financial wellness education uh, to help them operate their plan in the best way possible. A little bit more about uh, DP Grow. Um, so again, we are a concierge level RAA. So if you've had an advisor before, we do operate a little bit differently from them. Uh, one of the ways that we do that um, is really by making sure that we're a part of all of the different puzzle pieces that it takes to put a 401k plan together and operate it efficiently um, throughout the year. So um, we help employers. We do an annual plan review. Um, we help you with your day-to-day -day administration. Any question you can think of with 401k, we're going to be there to answer it. Um, and if we are not the expert, we're going to get the right expert involved to make sure we get the answer to your question um, or any issues that you may have resolved. So, as I mentioned, we work very closely in concert with Dominion Payroll. They are our sister company. Um, and the way that we kind of work with them is by providing that initial plan setup information to them. We work with them to make sure the payroll integration between um, your payroll provider and your retirement provider is up and running appropriately. And any reporting requests that you have along the year, um, any compliance items that you need our help with um, where we can pull payroll data on your behalf to kind of take that workload off of you, um, we handle that for our clients on your behalf. Additionally, we work with your plan providers, so any type of service requests that may come up uh, where you need to reach out to your record keeper, your plan provider, we will work with them and kind of handle those tasks for you um, and also work with your employees if they have any items that they need help with uh, at your plan provider level. Um, additionally, the biggest um, kind of resource that we provide to our clients is education. And it's education for you as the employer who is running this plan day in and day out. But also, very importantly, education for your employees. When you're offering a retirement plan, it's an, in a, an incredible benefit to provide to your employees. But we want to make sure that they're educated on how they can utilize that plan um, to not only set the, themselves up for success, but then to also make sure that um, the plan that you've set in place for them is being property, properly utilized. So again, we do provide one-on-one -on -one investment advice and um, you know, consulting with Dennis, um, as well as group financial education, um, which could be as simple as introducing your plan to your team and making sure they're aware of it, um, but then, then also getting really granular um, with any financial wellness topics that you want to cover. Um, you know, why should you save for retirement? How much should you be saving? What other options um, are there that you need to consider in terms of being a financially fit individual in order to kind of prepare yourself um, for retirement? So we really kind of do it all, and we like to take all of the heavy lifting off of your plate as best as we can um, and just kind of guide you and be that traffic conductor uh, with the many moving parts that are in a retirement plan. 
Um, we're happy to answer questions at the end of this presentation. Um, if you have questions about how our services um, could potentially help you and your company out, um, as well as any questions that you may have as we cover some of these topics about what's changing in the retirement plan world. Um, there's changes that are happening right now, changes happening next year, um, and we're here to kind of assist you and answer any questions you might have along the way. Um, if for some reason we're not able to get to your question during the call, um, I will make sure that we follow up with you personally uh, to get you an answer um, and cover whatever topics you do have questions on. So without further ado, I'll go on and introduce Dennis Tender and let him kind of get started and go over the agenda for the rest of the call. Great, thank you, Carrie. And again, um, you know, Carrie and her team, you know, hats off to them. For those of you that are on the call today uh, that work with Carrie and her team uh, on a daily basis, you know that uh, the big difference from us being an advisor versus the other advisors out there uh, in the uh, retirement plan space is um, we know payroll and we know uh, we know record keepers and uh, Carrie and her team do a great job. So thank you, Carrie. Uh, what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to take a couple of minutes and talk a little bit about Secure Act 2.0 and uh, now some more changes that are coming in uh, uh, 2025 and beyond. As you can see here, there's a, a plethora of uh, amendments and, and uh, additions or provisions that uh, are being added. Uh, some have already started, uh, but a lot are now coming in 2025 and 2026. So I'm just going to touch on some of these uh, briefly today. And, talk about some of the advantages and benefits to those. I'll let you go, there we go. Um, so just to reiterate, you know, if you remember, it's been a while, right? Secure Act 2.0 uh, became law or was signed into law at the end of 2022. And, you know, really the big reason why this initiative came around and there was a lot of collaboration in the, uh, in the House, both uh, sides of the aisle to put this bill together because at the end of the day, we're just not saving enough money for retirement uh, and, uh, as Americans. And so it's really becoming a crisis as our uh, population continues to age, right? We've got 78 million baby boomers out there and beyond. The need for retirement planning and also putting money away for retirement is a greater than, uh, than it ever has been. Um, we're seeing increased uh, accessibility. We'll talk a little bit about some of the uh, mandatory auto enrollment that's coming now and, and really helping folks uh, participate uh, by doing that. The big one, as we mentioned, is really encouraging savings and, and growth that the provisions, the government really wants to try with this act to help make it easier for folks uh, to put money away, but also to be able to uh, uh, use money or put money away, things like emergency savings accounts, you know, um, the hardship withdrawal provisions that are being added, you know, just uh, being able to put money away for retirement, but of course, when life happens, to be able to make it a little easier too for folks to be able to deal with those things. And then lastly is really enhanced flexibility. You know, the act is trying to really allow to make some of these withdrawals penalty free, and in some cases, uh, tax free, uh, you know, when need be. And so really, really important to take a look at uh, all these uh, new provisions that are coming uh, in 2025. Next. So uh, for those of you that have uh, started new plans uh, at the, uh, in 2023, uh, and now of course 2024, if your plan was not set up with auto enrollment, it's gonna be mandatory in 2025. Uh, this applies to again, 401Ks and 403B plans established uh, after December 29th, 2022. And the contribution rate starts at 3%. So minimum automatic enrollment is at 3% and then will escalate by 1% each year, uh, uh, as you can see, going all the way up to 15% over time. Uh, folks obviously will have the ability to be able to opt out uh, if they don't want to participate in the plan, but this will force them at least to go in to register and to make that decision uh, versus uh, making it before the plan starts. Next slide. Uh, this is a big one that uh, we're starting to see get some traction that actually came about um, in 2024, and that was the uh, student loans provision. But one that's coming that starts in 2025 is the financial incentives for plan participants. This will allow you employers to offer small incentives up to $250 uh, to encourage enrollment. Um, and this is a this I think it can be a really good um, 
a way for those of you that have uh, uh, matches, discretionary matches, and uh, face some issues sometimes when it comes to testing. One of the ways to help testing is by increasing participation. And so getting folks involved and getting them to participate uh, can really help in terms of your plan design and how you as the owner or some of your highly compensated employees can benefit uh, in terms of testing. As I mentioned on the student loan front, this also can be a great retention tool if you've got a lot of folks uh, on your uh, teams, uh, your employees that have student loans and they're trying to pay these back. What we're seeing in the marketplace is that there's a lot of students uh, are new to the workforce that aren't participating in plans because they do have this um, uh, enormous uh, student loan debt that they're trying to deal with. And so if they were to participate, they were gonna get a match. And so that match can now be applied to, uh, to helping them pay off their student loans. And if you think about that, as I mentioned, it can be a great retention rule uh, for folks uh, because they're getting that and helping them to pay those loans down. This is an optional, by the way, provision uh, that you can add to the plan. It's not mandatory, uh, but would encourage you to do so. Next slide. Um, in addition, in 2025 uh, is going to be the uh, new emergency savings accounts. Um, this this will happen. Uh, the automatic enrollment for non highly uh, compensated employees. They're going to be able to put away up to three percent of their pay to a maximum balance of twenty five hundred dollars. After which contributions will stop. Uh, they will convert to Roth, uh, and their allowed first four withdrawals are going to be uh, uh, fee free. So. The um, record keepers uh, that you have or are using will have this set up in their system. There'll be no fees associated with uh, any withdrawals and they'll be able to withdraw up to four times per, uh, per year. Um, again, I believe that this act, uh, we're waiting for some clarity on it, will allow for more than four withdrawals, but it's just four that are gonna be uh, uh, penalty free. We're also gonna see uh, emergency withdrawals uh, without penalty. This is where folks are going to be able to take up uh, or take out a thousand dollars without any uh, penalty. They've got to repay it back over a three-year period and this is for you know again uh, any uh, reason at all. As I walk through some of these uh, changes, these new provisions that are added in 25 and beyond, uh, a big change that we're seeing is that these a lot of these are self-certifying. You may remember in the past that you as the plan sponsor and or your record keeper or third party administrator would be the one to certify that the withdrawal provision uh, was being used correctly. Now these will be self-certified. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a moment uh, as a best practice we think will be good for you in terms of allowing folks to be able to do that. But this emergency withdrawal without uh, penalty, uh, again, is the optional provision and uh, will start in 2025. Uh, next one I have here is the penalty-free withdrawals for uh, anybody uh, in a federally declared disaster area. As we know, it was a rough year for the country um, and continues to be so now, particularly out west and we're even seeing in the northeast in terms of uh, fires uh, with the, uh, the drought that's upon us. If an area in the country has been designated uh, uh, a federally uh, uh, declared disaster area, folks can withdraw uh, up to $22,000 penalty-free. Uh, for these uh, disaster issues. And again, the uh, certification on this is gonna be um, on the employee to be able to self-certify. But we recommend that you wanna have some policy in place, uh, some documentation, you know, really uh, make sure that uh, you, know, you develop some type of uh, form uh, that they can fill out, uh, something that you can have to keep on a record to have uh, the client uh, sign that uh, they attest to it and to keep this because again, they're self-attesting on some of these. Next, you're gonna see under the domestic abuse withdrawal, this is a new option up to $10,000 uh, for anybody who is a, a victim or a survivor of domestic uh, abuse. This provision it's a, a tax can be a tax refund of income taxes if they repay this back, uh, within a three-year period of time. And so if they take this withdrawal uh, and they pay it back within three years, uh, that taxes that they paid will be um, uh, uh, refunded back to them uh, from uh, from the IRS. Next slide. Uh, we're also seeing we've got uh, uh, changes this year, age limits. Uh, we're seeing RMDs uh, from 73 in 2023 are now going to age 75 starting uh, January 1st. 
and uh, anyone born in 2033. Uh, so again, the aging population of America, this is a sign of that, that you know, folks are not only living longer, but they're also working longer and saving them money longer. And so uh, this has been extended for those folks that uh, uh, don't wanna take money out of their uh, plans. Remember, they can uh, continue to contribute to a 401k plan uh, as long as they want to, as long as they're uh, continuing to work. We're also seeing the catch-up contribution limits increase. Uh, in 2025, those folks that are between 16 and 63 will be able to contribute up to $10,000 additional monies uh, versus the 7,500, which is the catch-up provision now. And then lastly, uh, you know, really defined benefit plan, the fund noticings, we're seeing some uh, significant changes here. One of the things, uh, for example, with uh, SEPs, uh, they're going to have to disclose uh, what the funding percentage, assets, and liabilities of the plan uh, notices to participants, usually themselves, uh, and or to the DOL. They're going to have to be done at the beginning of the year uh, versus uh, the end of the year. Also effective in 2026 is going to be mandatory for defined benefit contributions. At least one statement must be provided on a paper or in written form for each calendar year and or they have to follow the DOL's electrical delivery uh, rules for participants in terms of uh, disclosure. And what I would tell you that what we've seen over the years is that the DOL is really big on this. You know, the big thing that uh, the DOL, if you get audited or when you're audited, uh, looks at is they want to make sure folks got notices on a timely basis and they were delivered properly. That goes for enrollment. Uh, that they were notified that they're eligible to enroll, and then of course uh, the uh, annual notices that need to go out. I think a good best practice is here is if you if you don't have a record keeper that can help here, you know this is a good opportunity to maybe think about getting one, uh, because uh, some of the record keepers can really help make sure that you stay compliant in the, in this area. Um, and getting some good guidance. You know what I always say to folks is that you know good piece of advice. Uh, or even intervention sometime can be worth 10 years of fees. All these uh, provisions that we talked about today and these additions, I think are all very beneficial and make your uh, employer sponsored plan uh, much more robust on behalf of your employees. All these provisions have to be in the plan uh, or amended by the end of 2026. You know, the big takeaway here is I think, um, Take a look at these provisions, see which ones make sense for you and your business to be able to add them. This is a great time to be able to, to do that. Great opportunity to re-engage with your employees. If you haven't benchmarked your plan in a while, I would encourage you to do so. We would be happy to do that for you as well, no pressure. If you want us to take a look at your current plan, we can talk about your current demographic and what maybe has changed in your business, particularly since COVID, uh, if, uh, if so, and then we can uh, help you. Lastly, I wanted to mention that for part-time employees, uh, those that are now uh, part-time for two years, uh, 500 hours or more versus three, are going to um, and will be eligible to participate in, the, in these plans. Where this is gonna start to become sticky again is gonna be with auto enrollment, right? So when these folks are eligible, they're gonna be auto, auto, automatically enrolled. And so uh, Dominion Payroll and iSolve, again, great payroll system that integrates with a record keeper. So having the right record keeper can really help here and kind of take that off your plate to make sure that that done so properly. With that, I think we're gonna maybe open it up for some questions. I don't think we have any uh, questions live right now, but just to kind of sum up, um, bring everything full circle from our call today, it's a lot of information to take in, and it's going to continue to be a lot of information to take in. Um, deadlines for certain items are being pushed back. Um, there's items that are taking place and, and being implemented at the top of each year uh, for, for the next foreseeable few years. So we're here to help you um, and answer any questions that you might have. Um, please don't hesitate to reach out to us um, and uh, let us know what questions and what we can help you with. Um, again, as Dennis mentioned, we can benchmark your existing plan, um, and we can also help um, with uh, just kind of reviewing how your plan is designed to make sure that it's benefiting both you, the employer, and your employees. Um, <clears throat> and then I will send out this presentation at the end of the call as well. 
um, so that everybody has access to our contact information as well as this data. Uh, Dennis, I actually do have one question. Um, is the emergency fund going to be mandatory for plan sponsors to offer? Great question. Uh, currently, right now, it is not. It's an optional provision, so you do, do not have to offer it, uh, but it, um, uh, it will obviously be a great benefit for your employees if you do. Great. So I think that's all of the questions. Um, so we'll go on and give you all a little bit of time back in your day. Um, again, please don't ever hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, we'll be happy to help you out with any questions you can think of in terms of your retirement plans and whatever offerings you want to provide to your employees. Thank you, everyone. Great. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.